Imagine a product that gets worse over time and costs more over time. You, that's not very good, is it? That seems to be the pattern with computer software. You know, everybody is constantly rewriting the same piece of software that's existed for the better part of half a century, and it always is a little bit crappier and it always costs a little bit more. The latest thing to fall victim to that is LastPass. LastPass, to be sure, is a little bit service and a little bit software. Uh, combine the two together. And LastPass, historically, has been a really good tool for doing basic password hygiene. And this is actually something everybody should be concerned about, password hygiene, uh, in the, sort of the modern secure world. Nobody should be using the same password for every website. Probably you should be using a randomly generated password. But then the problem becomes, how do you manage that? Well, there's software for that. Sometimes you can also use tokens. We got a, a YubiKey here. We've done videos in the past on YubiKey, and it's like it's basically a hardware security token. It's like a car key, but you plug it in, and <laughs> instead of bumps on a piece of metal, it's uh, bumps in an equation, a mathematical equation, solutions for mathematical equation. And believe it or not, these kinds of tokens are really secure. Let's dive in. All right, so first up, let's talk about LastPass. It's more than just a password manager. It's also a synchronization service. So you can have your phone and your laptop and your other laptop and your work laptop and your home computer and your other home computer. You can have your whole family. You know, they've really figured out a lot of value adds for the product. The problem is that while this was really innovative and awesome a couple of years ago, it's really pretty bog standard now. It's kind of a race to the bottom. This is just basic infrastructure. It's basic plumbing. It's in the news. They're changing their, their free account. Are you going to have to subscribe? <laughs> no doubt a lot of people are going to subscribe. But I don't think that it's really the best idea. There are free alternatives that are as good or better than LastPass. I think that the version that they want you to pay for is not worth it. This is the thing that's really so upsetting to me about this is that it's not that they're charging money for this. It's that, you know, it's like this is some premium service. It's like, no, this is a service that should be on the order of like five or ten bucks a year. Uh, and maybe not even that because it's just not that complicated. The technology required to do this isn't a big deal. It's like, I don't know, running water inside your house getting more expensive or electricity getting more expensive doesn't make sense. The reason I find this so upsetting is because this kind of stuff should be just a basic part of digital hygiene. The cost should be basically going to zero over time. And yeah, it might be 10 bucks a year now, but next year it might be $9 and in another five or 10 years, it might be on the order of like a dollar a year. That's what should be trending here. There's this idea in Silicon Valley to take things and make them scarce and then charge a lot of money for them. And it's a pretty common business model. If you sort of understand that, you'll, no you'll notice that in a lot of other places. Even like here in America, like our internet bandwidth. It's like, let's take something that's kind of plentiful, make it scarce, and then charge a lot more for it. Let's take, you know, water, make it scarce, and charge a lot more for it. Oh, we've messed up the municipal water supply. Now it's undrinkable. Ha ha ha, let's charge. You know, this is a, a pretty common capitalistic business model anymore, and it's downright scary we literally have the tools to build something that's not oppressive and, and leads to misery and suffering of human beings like let's not build software that locks people in a box and forces them to pay money it squeezes them to pay money because you know it's just it's just a race to see whoever can inflict the most misery on individuals so that they'll pay money to stop it and that's just not a direction i want to go in and I get what they're trying to do. They're, they're trying to build a profitable product. They need to you know, squeeze a little bit more out of it. They've captured some market. Maybe they want to increase margins by getting rid of some of the freeloaders. So they've made changes to their free product that make it a little less actually useful. And this isn't the first time they've made changes to their product to make it more annoying for users. So I want to draw your attention to some other password managers and really some of the fundamentals about the mechanicals of how this works. First off, the synchronization service. That's really the special sauce. I mean, that's something out on the internet and you should pay to defend that, right? I mean, 
you don't want to just have some random person spooling up, you know, some service somewhere and all of your passwords go there. How can that possibly be secure? I mean, isn't that basically what LastPass does? I mean, you should pay money to keep that secure. It, that's a little bit boogeyman. That's not really true. In an ideal world, your password file is itself encrypted with a password that the synchronization service doesn't have. So when you enroll your devices in the synchronization service, uh, authentication is required with a password or an account or something like that, but it's really just an exchange of information that is already encrypted. It's encrypted before it hits the wire. It's encrypted before it leaves your device. Um, there are certainly many versions of this. Uh, another version of this uh, is public key cryptography, where uh, you see this used a lot with like secure shell connections and, and other types of connections that um, are a little different from the type of connections that you're used to with your email or something like that. Basically, you generate a, a public key and a private key, and those are you know, large prime numbers. And somebody that you're communicating with, you can take their public key and your private key and do some encryption and send that down the wire. And the only thing that will produce an intelligible result on the remote end is the corresponding private key because there's a mathematical relationship between the public and the private key that a user has. And so this is public key cryptography. And this is, you know, sort of one of the fundamental foundations of the internet. Well, yes, LastPass is implemented to provide some of these things at a fundamental level, which is awesome. It's, it's, it's it basically had cryptographic experts look at it. It's not just some, you know, prodigal college student somewhere doing this without really understanding the deeper security implications, which is critically important in, in something like this. But the reality is that if you think about like the synchronization service and keeping your stuff secure, that's sort of been there, done that. There's things like Google Drive and OneDrive, Dropbox, all of those other services provide basically the same functionality except for files. And yeah, the files are not encrypted before they leave your machine. Well, I mean, they could be. You could create a password protected zip file, for example, and store that on Dropbox. And Dropbox is not going to be able to look inside that zip file without that password. And it's non-trivial to recover that password or crack that password. So those services will provide file synchronization across different machines, uh, but they don't necessarily provide the cryptographic part of it in exactly the same way. Well, let me introduce you to uh, KeePass XC. So KeePass is a piece of software that's open source and KeePass XC is a particular version of KeePass that is open source, which is a different group. Open source can be sometimes confusing. So this is a community pl plumbing problem, like I said, and some open source people sort of recognize this. And some open source people recognize that there are commercial companies that are trying to peddle their service and they're maybe getting a little bit too much indistinguishable from something that is grifting you unnecessarily because like I say these services should be getting cheaper and easier not more expensive with less features which is the situation that we find ourselves in. And so KeePass provides an encrypted data store. It'll also optionally use something like a YubiKey to make its AES-256 key for the encryption. And AES-256 is a really really awesome algorithm. The thing to understand with KeePass is that it actually supports a lot of synchronization options. But I think the easiest one is to just have a file. So the same way that you would move a file between multiple machines with something like Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive or Nextcloud or whatever service that you want to use for file synchronization, it works just fine, exactly the same way for your password file. And remember, your password file is encrypted. So it's just like that encrypted zip file, but it's AES-256 encrypted. So they might be able to get their hands on the file, but they can't get their hands on your password. And if you use something like a security token, they're really not going to get into that because AES-256. I don't want to get super technical, but AES-256, if it's implemented correctly, um, would take more energy than you'd get out of a supernova to run through just a quarter of the key space, a little over a quarter of the key space of AES-256, assuming that the smallest measurable amount of energy that there can be according to the conventional laws of physics is all that it takes to search one key in the algorithm. So assuming the most efficient machine possible running at the cosmic background temperature and we were able to harness 100% of the energy 
of a supernova, we're not going to get through an AES-256 key space. KeePass XC uses AES-256 to encrypt its file. And so the really awesome thing is if you use KeePass XC, you can just rely on a file synchronization service like Dropbox. If you are Nextcloud, like if you DIY this and you host your own stuff, you can use Nextcloud and the synchronization works. It's pretty awesome. It has reasonably okay browser integration. It has YubiKey support. So if you're really technical and you want to roll a YubiKey, you can, you can do that. A uh, how-to for that is going to have to be left to the level one forum because I don't want to get super long-winded in this video. But you can do basically everything that you want to do with KeePass XC. So you should give that a try as an alternative to LastPass. Now, if you're a little less technical and some of those words didn't sound like a lot of fun, because it is a lot of fun, trust me. Uh, I would also point you at Bitwarden. Now, Bitwarden is a commercial product and they're kind of in the middle um, with this. So they'll pay for things like Twitter advertisements to advertise their product. So they're making money. They offer a synchronization service, but the software itself is free. If you don't want to use the synchronization service, you don't have to, but it's a little bit more cumbersome and problematic to uh, roll your own synchronization. It is nowhere near as easy as KeePass XC, but it has some features that KeePass XC doesn't have, like a really awesome browser integration, for example. Although the, the KeePass XC browser integration is not, not terrible. Mobile device integration, things like that. Now with Bitwarden, what you get for 10 bucks a year is a gigabyte storage. Your, your password file is not going to be a gigabyte. That's crazy. And uh, one-time passwords. A one-time password service, which is more useful than it sounds. 10 bucks a year is about what the cost should be on something like this, or about a dollar a month. Anything more than that, you're being grifted. And let's face it, Bitwarden's actually making pretty good money at 10 bucks a year, so. So check out Bitwarden and try their synchronization service because they do offer some stuff on the free tier. Now, if you want to create your own Bitwarden synchronization server, you totally can, but not from the actual Bitwarden people. If you follow their uh, instructions, in my opinion, they're deliberately obtuse. There's a third party that's created a Docker container that will allow you to spin up your own uh, synchronization server. And like everything else, it seems to be encrypted on the wire. I don't know that I 100% trust this Docker container because like I say, it's from a third party, but it is open source and it's on GitHub. And so you can do that. But you do have an option to roll your own synchronization service, spin it up in Docker. You can do it in Linode. You know, your own Linode hosting, like the, the lowest tier Linode that you can possibly get, or, you know, just the most modest hosting that you could possibly imagine, you can run that. And then you have your password synchronization service. And this is really awesome, because then you'll be able to generate a unique password for every website that you use, have it autofill, and also have that file synchronized across all of your devices. You can also store a lot of other things in there other than passwords, things like instructions on how to access a system or anything like that. You still want to protect that file. Even though that file is on your, you know, your Dropbox, you don't necessarily want to have that file on the public internet. Yes, it is encrypted, but it's only as protected as the master password. So you have one password for this encrypted file, and then it has access to all of your other passwords. So uh, it is good that the password is not transmitted over the wire in a file synchronization scenario with like KeePass XC, but that means that that master password has to be that much more awesome and not used on any of the websites in case they were to leak it. And if you use your your YubiKey for your master password, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I know that's a lot of steps. I know that's a headache, but this is sort of the modern world that we find ourselves in with password management. You absolutely do need to be using some kind of a password manager I think that KeePass XC for the technical user or Bitwarden for the less technical user are the best choices that there are right now. Much better than LastPass, especially after the last changes. And they're definitely something you should check out. So, just a quickie. I'm Wendell. This is Level 1. I'm signing out. And I'll see you later.